welcome back dear students so today we are going to solve a question from 9701-31 okay so this is for practical exam you can see this is paper 3 advanced practical skills and today we are going to solve a question related to the color titration okay so specifically that is related to the titration of potassium manganate against mohar salt or you can say iron ammonium sulfate a double salt okay so whatever you can say this is the same like this should be called as mohar salt iron ammonium iron 2 sulfate okay or we can say it is what it is uh, mohar salt or a double salt so in all cases has the same but in this specific situation, examiner mentioned just iron too. Okay. Later on, he will reveal that uh, it is what uh, mohar salt containing ammonium ion, iron ion, and a sulfate. So it is iron ammonium iron two sulfate. Ammonium iron two sulfate. Let's start. All other situations are same exactly. The only difference you must have to remember that while you are taking the reading and you fill the burette okay so the main thing is that like this is 0, 0.00 the burette you are filling it up so whenever you have you have to fill it up now check the upper meniscus for color titration whenever you have a color solution in your burette always look for the upper meniscus okay not for the lower for the colorless liquids you have to check for the lower meniscus but the colored one you have to check the upper meniscus rest all of the procedure exactly the same i'm not going to repeat it as you people very well aware of the situation that how to fill the burette and what to do and again a simple advice for all of you if you are new to my channel and you are seeing you are watching this video for the first time related to the titration just focus and do as directed just focus on the instructions and do as directed so this is the simplified instruction for you do as directed try not to do anything which is not directed okay just do as directed so it is clearly mentioned this is the method you just have to follow this method okay when you follow this method and here he says that perform rough titration and this is uh, written in bores mean we have to focus only on this part so for this part you have to follow and you have to record your bivaret reading in such a way that you can easily note down the rough titration result but the mark will be awarded if you are following a proper pattern what is the proper pattern you have to write the final burette reading final burette reading slash cm cube so the unit must be there then initial burette reading initial burette reading slash cm cube and finally what you have to do volume used or just volume okay volume used or volume used and also enclose this in a proper tabulated form remember that in your practical exam if your results are not tabulated they will not be entertained and examiner will never check these and you will never get marks okay so please try to remember this format and try to note down in the form of the table so in exam uh, examiner report or in your mark scheme you can easily observe that what are the requirement okay so the requirement the table the proper format like final initial the units and the volume use and here i'm going to say like initial final initially i fill the bureau till 0 0.50 not exactly zero okay and the final bureau reading let's suppose again this is just supposed reading as i'm not doing this in a practical situation i'm just doing a, a rough titration okay and in this rough titration i'm just mentioning that i have 26.30 
so this was the initial final reading this was the final reading uh, sorry initial reading now we have to subtract to get the volume used so it should be zero here and uh, 13 5 so 8 0.25 so it is 25.80 so we are going to write over here 25.80 remember that I'm just using these simple results uh, and the simple values okay now you have to stick to the procedure perform the experiment as directed properly and try to perform and try to get your own readings okay just focus the format the values may be differ while you are performing your experiment next then he says that do as many accurate titration so this is the key point and next to obtain the consistent result these two are the main points he clearly mentioned do as many titration you can but remember we have a limited time paper okay so we have to focus for the time as well if we are not focusing for the time so the whole day maybe the whole week we can spend to get these accurate readings okay so please remember that we have a short time as well this is a limited time paper so what you are going to do you have to focus on the consistent result what are the result that should be considered as a consistent result if the reading from rough reading to the first reading there is a gap of 0 0.2 so and then from first reading to the second reading it there is a gap of 0 0.1 so these two readings are considered as consistent results okay so the reading the difference between the rough and the first must be 0 0.2 and from first to second must be 0 0.1 so these should be called as what rough titration now I can suggest you just take one more reading so that you may aware that the first reading was uh, a good one or the accurate one if you titrated second time and you got a very different result from this 25.80 or from your rough titration then it means something is uh, incorrect you done with your one of the titration either for the first time or for the second time and if the reading difference is very minimal okay like one or two or three then yes you can say that the procedure you adopted was cor correct and perfect okay now what you have to do just make the table okay and then read the reading uh, do these results accordingly and try to write down the consistent results right to count down sorry write down the consistent results the final buret reading as i mentioned you what should be the uh, format of the table final buret reading final buret reading slash cm cube then initial buret reading initial Buret reading slash C and Q and then finally volume used or just you may mention the volume okay so this should be the format of the table now you have to take at least two readings okay at least two readings or you may take as many reading as you can but the main focus we are going to find out the consistent result and what are consistent result if the gap is between 0 0.1 okay between the two readings like I'm say this initial reading was 0 0.00 here 0 0.15 okay so anything then must make that the difference between this should be 0 0.2 so I'm initially clearly mentioning here it should be 20 and must be to the lower side okay so 25.60 so it should be 25.60 25.60 then as I write it the uh, difference must be the first and second must be 0 0.1 so I'm clearly writing 25.50 25.50 and what should be the final one just add these two values so you got 5 you got 6 
and then 25 understood so you can easily see what I did and how you can get the marks the first mark is for the rough reading but if your format you're following the proper format like final initial their unit and must be the value in two decimal places second again by following the pattern okay here you are following the pattern the third mark should be awarded uh, to the situation like you are following the two decimal place two dp situation okay and unit is it clear the next here volume use properly and uh, the pattern I mentioned the pattern tabulated form yes so if your results are not tabulated you may not get one of the marks and these two read uh, marks belongs to the accuracy what does that mean accuracy mean these results should be awarded if your answer is matching the reading taken by the examiner or your supervisor by the day of your exam okay so no need to worry about these two marks you just have to worry about the pattern you have to follow because that has more marks as compared to the accuracy and believe me when you follow the instructions properly when you follow the pattern then there is a maximum percent of the chances that your results should remain accurate okay so please focus and try to remember this